Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a 1v1 for you today on Road to Tunis. We've obviously seen a lot of US versus Wehrmacht lately. And fortunately, a friend of mine answered my call for support with this excellent game between the DAC and the Brits. So playing as the Axis, we have Ferragy from Hungary, the number two ranked DAC player. He's got to get on that. Uh, and he uses the Armored Support Battle Group. And then on the Allied side, we have Meteor Hammer from Russia, ranked number 27 with the Brits, using the Heavy Armor Battle Group. This time around, I have two co-casters. The first is original homeboy Gray Fox and our new teammate Ojima. You may recognize him from his detailed conversations in the SARS GG Discord and in my video's comments. He knows a lot about how this game ticks. Needless to say, this match is pretty hard fought with an ending that absolutely none of us expected. And with that, I hope you enjoy. On to the match. Cool. So we got a good one today. Playing as a DAC. Obviously, we got Farage here and he locks in armored right away. Uh, Panzer Pios and a crowd shoots and out for him. So interesting to see how he handles the crowd shoots and his new uh, maneuverability or lack thereof. And then Meteor Hammer uh, as the Brits immediately getting a section command post out. Uh, he's got his sappers, he's got infantry section on the way. So this one should be a pretty good matchup. And then like I said in the intro, I've got Ojima and Gray Fox with me casting this one. Uh, Yo. Yeah. How's it going? So, uh, I'm I'm excited about this. I I actually put it in one of the chats earlier. I've seen a lot of US versus Wehrmacht lately. And you know the the high level play is still really interesting, but you know as I was talking to Orange Pest and he was talking about how DAC doesn't feel viable. Uh, I was like, "Man, I'd really like to see uh someone play DAC well. And if anyone's going to do it, I think it's Farage." Oh, Farage's have uh, I've looked at his record and he's just been playing a ton of uh DAC. Yeah, he's only the number three ranked DAC player, though, so he's still got a little bit on the ladder to climb. <laughs> <laughs> so someone talk me through uh, British strategy here, where I feel like the norm right now, you, you're facing the Dingoes and the Humbers, and like they're really leaning hard into the vehicles, but right now Meteor Hammers, just two good old-fashioned infantry sections coming out with the Sappers. I mean, I kind of think the infantry sections give you the flexibility against DAC vehicles. Right, if you end up, and he and he actually selects the heavier armor battle group, so I'm, we'll see where he goes from here. Normally with the DAC against the Americans, you can really lean into the eight rods and like the light vehicle play, uh, because they have to, even if they tech grenades, good micro and get around it, and then they have to um, side tech to get bazookas, or they have to get a motor pull out quickly, which makes their infantry less effective. Um, but with the Brits, because they can just pop the boys' AT rifles, the light vehicles are a, a, at a little bit of higher risk, I think. So I, I'm too, I'm looking to see how Farage kind of reacts to this. And yeah, Meteor, this is interesting. We're going to see the mortar play, which the mortar change in the most recent patch requires a little bit more micro, which um, I'm not opposed to. I think it rewards, uh, you know, Good high micro players. Man, that infantry section took a ton of damage. Finally drops a model. Yeah. Those DAC Pgrens are still very strong, especially with those Pios they start with. Yeah. A third infantry section out for Meteor Hammer. So I think, you know, like to a, a point earlier, I think he's maybe concerned about uh, having the flexibility to deal with the potential DAC light vehicle push. Fergie sure. countering with uh, three Panzer Grenadiers. Oh. Wow, look at that. Yeah, they are. Will He's only dropped down. one model in that entire engagement. Yeah. Yeah, I think he did a really good job with the, the TTK changes, right? He allowed the engagement to start with himself in the defense and in cover. And then once he, you know, once Meteor Hammer had to start moving his units to the rear, he just then advanced and because especially with bolt action rifles they can't shoot while they're moving like backwards although as we get to this other engagement over here pgren's just moving up out of cover and just clearly winning against infantry section although i think this is more rng based so farage gets his first tech out and there's one thing that you see about what how uh, DAC plays their, their guys, right? Is that they keep it very like close together. 
-hmm. And uh, they try to win their engagement before they try to cap the rest of the map. You see like a couple one cap cap uh, uh, um, points uh, down below, purely because of how Dak has to play it right now. Yeah. They, they play it almost like a team game. Yeah, he, he's being very deliberate and not trying, yeah, keep, like you said, keeping his units together where they can support each other. So he goes to the veteran gunners with the advanced penetration and uh, he got the fire support element. So I think we're going to see a flak filling here. But the flak filling with the extra penetration is a, I'd say, a soft counter to the Humber play if he's expecting that from Meteor Hammer. The mortar doing a lot of damage to these infantry in the building. And actually, Ferrici calls for basically a mass retreat on the east side of the map. Now he's capping up the west side with his crotch shits and pegrins. Yeah, he's four fuel away from getting that flak filling out. Which I think will actually be a good counter with this infantry heavy build from Meteor Hammer. And he hasn't built his platoon command post yet. Interesting placement on the med bunker. I think he did the default placement and it kind of screwed him because it put it up in the back. Oh, yeah. Which yeah, is just far away unfortunate. Possible. Yeah, because you get the aura healing, right, when you retreat, but what, it right. just moves your medics even further away when they go to recover casualties. You can't, like, heal and move out of the base, so unfortunate. Yep, mortar targeting these pegrins, and they just slide over. Black filling on the way out. Oh, Jim, I was going to ask you what you thought uh, Meteor Hammer is going to do, but I know you have a little bit of advanced intel, so I'm going to hold yeah. off on that. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that the game the game was uh, had like half decent to watch. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then he immediately pops the ISG call in. So that's a huge swing in army composition for Farage oh, here. Yeah. yeah, he's got the flak for Link coming out, and he's gonna have that heavy and direct. Meteor hammer still just holding what he's got well, and yeah, this this is smart too he's using the healing on the half track that he just called in with the isg to top off his pegrins before they move out of base because i was wondering why they were sitting there but that makes a lot of sense meanwhile meteor hammer making a big push on the west side of the map uh he's got sappers he's got a couple infantry sections and he's going for the brens so i guess he recognizes this is probably a tier two play and so he's getting an AT gun out, but we haven't seen a Humber, and I don't think we've seen Stuart tech yet either. Yeah, it's because um, with DAC, uh, healing is a little bit more expensive because they have your options are basically to just buy the ambulance or uh, or to heal from your half track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, healing even more important now in this version of the patch. Oh, this mortar caught out of position. With the increased infantry TTK, team weapons like the Mortar are at much higher risk of being burned down. Infantry section retreats. The other, with the Bren, gets into some light cover. And I think he's stalling for this AT gun to come out and take a shot at the flak for Lang. Yeah, I kind of try to bait him in a little bit. Oh. Yeah. It's setting up. Yeah, it's in spot. There's the first shot. It's gonna... Uh, okay. I thought it would. I thought it would whiff at that distance. So there's rocks in the way. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not a bazooka, so it can actually hit what it's shooting at. <laughs> what it shoots at. Yeah. And not just the ground in front of it. Mm -hmm. Zappers. You gotta hold the tube the... up, boys. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Zappers forced off. They, they have a good push initially against the pegrins, but with the half track there and a couple squads of pegrins, that's going to be too much for them to handle. It looks like Meteor Hammer is going to have to reset and come back out. Now we're seeing the Stewart tech. And, uh, Ojima, what do you think about Stewart tech to counter uh, this, like, flak for laying light vehicle heavy build here? Or light, <laughs> light vehicle light build, I guess. I mean, you you know, with the USF, you would gr grab Greyhounds, right? That's yeah. that's sort of one of the ways to, uh, you kind of expect the uh, the flak for laying uh, at, at, uh, at this point. And, um... The extra the extra penetration on uh, on like a chaffy or something like that doesn't actually do do anything to the the um, uh, doesn't do actually do anything to the the half track. You know, it, it's it's kind of in this weird uh, Goylock zone where it doesn't take too much damage from small arms, 
but mm -hmm. also like like even like greyhounds and, and stewards would uh would be pretty much it will always pen it basically yeah, yeah like guaranteed penetration and uh chaffees are just like over penetrated oh a couple mines go off uh, also i'd like to say is that uh with the armored battle group uh for the um for the Brits, you know, you can uh, you can recall the uh, stewards. Uh, uh, you can invest a little bit more into the stewards, and you can recall them uh, uh, later later on. Ooh, Blackfilling gets smoked by the boys' Ooh, AT right Got him, nice. Yeah, nice move there. Those Pegrins, keyhole shots from the uh, AT got pretty nice too. Pegrins make a good push on infantry section, but there's no answer to the steward right now. There's a single pack 38 on the field, but it is not in position. So these pegrins are gonna one squad hard retreats, the other soft retreats. Yeah, it's I, Ojima. Going back to what we were you we were talking about before, I think it's interesting because generally for the U.S., the motor pool is is relatively able to counter the DAC, but I think the Brits have some slightly heavier options, and so you know the Stewart makes a lot of sense because there's not much. You have to worry about stickies, but you need hard AT to counter the Stuart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ISG scores a hit there. Yeah, and this this battle group in particular, right? You can you can recall light vehicles before you having the uh, the uh, tier three uh, building. Yeah. So I love the uh, I love the auto heal that the Stuarts get when they're out of combat. That's pretty nice too. I, I actually kind of hate that, but it is nice if you if you have a steward that it just it's heals your yourself. Stuart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can tell they don't play a lot of Brits. But it, it solves the it solves the problem of uh, because you put in a bunch of uh, fuel into stewards, it becomes really hard to get to tier three, right? So you can uh, you can recall your stewards and get tier three if uh, if you have to or or not. Well, and it, you, in a way, you you can punish your opponent for over investing uh in heavy at you just withdraw the stewards and then you get something out like a matilda that'll still bounce shots from a pack grenade oh ho, ho. crowd shooting gets annihilated by the six pounder and you gotta hand it meteor hammer he's losing on vps but it feels like he's gotten a couple of good uh pickups here yeah, the Stewart takes a run from the ISG as well as the AT gun, but it's not enough to really push it off. I'm sorry, it pushes it off, but it doesn't uh, do any serious damage to it. It'll just repair. But you know, really, the Stewart is just a uh, it's just a better Greyhound. It's just that it comes a little bit too slow, right? You need mm. the extra attack and stuff like that, and that's why like you don't see it as often, and you just don't see armor as often. That's why you don't see uh, Stewart as often. But I think Stewarts are really good. Yeah, and I know sometimes they can be abused, especially in team games. Um, but in this context, I think he's he's using it kind of the right way. He's using it to bridge into his late game units, and then with the Brits because they can withdraw and refit. Oh, this infantry section in the south. Uh, I think they'll probably be okay. They take a fair amount of damage. Yeah, it's be it's mostly because uh, with. Um you 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 play against Dak, and they don't really usually go for, for for tier two. They like to go directly into you know they like to play around the light support element, and then they like to go directly into P threes. Yeah, I, with Dak, you really only see one or the other, right? And and like we were talking about, I think an eight rod plus martyr heavy strategy is really dangerous against the Brits. The boys' AT rifles are really powerful, and then the martyrs against Stewarts uh, are going to lose. The Stewarts will just drive past them. Now, Fergie has enough Panzer Grenadiers there so he can use his snare, but these two Stuarts are going to potentially do a lot of damage here. Although, he, yeah. Meteor is playing pretty conservative with him. I wonder if he's concerned about mines. Has, has infantry section engaged pioneers as they're playing mines in the, uh, the center of the map there? P3 on the way out for Fergie. Yeah, with that one AT gun, it's it's not hard for those two su stewards to just encircle it and decrew it either. Yeah, yeah. Would I, he's got to be worried about either the snares or mines, right? Because as soon as you can't actually get around and decrew the AT gun, and if you're very overextended and you lose both those stewards, 
It's a huge investment. Absolutely. And you and you lose, like you said, you basically lose the ability to get that fuel back. Yeah. And a P3 on the field here. Now, Farage is also going for the veteran squad leaders upgrade, which I really like because it also makes the units 10% harder to hit, which is uh, really good given the, the TTK changes. It basically a significant uh, help in infantry combat, not so much with vehicles. Um, but I mean, that applies to all DAC infantry. I think a lot of people think about veteran squad leaders just providing uh, a six man to the Panzer Grenadier squads. But it can also be worthwhile even if you're not playing very heavily with Panzer Grenadiers. Just from that received accuracy bonus. That, that one infantry squad so patient waiting there in the smoke. <laughs> Just hanging out. Uh, here come the stewards to challenge these P-Grinds. Well, and I, I like this. So he's got a P-Grin, a Panzer III, and an AT gun, Pac-38, on the west side of the map. That's going to be a hard combination to force off without Meteor Hammer, like, really investing into taking that back. And so Farage's going to keep the VP pressure on here. And potentially, you could also move forward and grab that fuel point. The sappers are upgraded with sweepers, so they're they're finding Farage's mines. Another AT gun coming out for Meteor Hammer. He's actually floating a little bit, and he has, with the CPs that he has, it doesn't look like he's going to go for the Crusader. Which honestly, I wouldn't recommend at this point anyway. I think the the value proposition of the Crusader AA tank has decreased a little bit. You gotta wonder what his thought process is now. Two stewards supported by two six pounders, uh, and then two pack thirty eight. Yeah, but I don't know that Farage's gonna commit and put his uh vehicles in a spot where they can get volley fired. Ooh. His Panzer Grenadier squad gets caught out of position here on the flank. I think they retreated early enough to be okay. Second P3 on the way. Where is he going to maintain the VP advantage here? Yeah, this is the upside to the DAC healing though. Like the fact that it's by default the med truck uh, is really valuable, especially on a 1v1 map where you can move around reinforced units so they don't have to do the hard retreat back to headquarters all the time. He just got, uh, Meteorham just got his, uh, T3 building up. Yep, building the company command post. Oh, the double six pounders come up, so the P3 has to be very careful. Pack 38 in the back as well. Kids are gonna just think about attempting the snare, but then decline. Half tracks force off the infantry section. On the opposite side of the map, infantry and sappers are gonna push off these panzer pios. Is there gonna... Two P3s out. I've, I'm kind of wondering if Meteor Hammer is going to get, you know, some heavier armor out soon. He doesn't have the fuel for it. He, but so he is building that that tier four building right now, and then if he withdraws his stewards, he'll basically immediately be able to get out of Matilda. He's getting foot guards out, which is an interesting choice. I think given the TTK changes, they're actually going to really suffer against these vetted uh, P Grands with the LMGs. You know they're mostly for AT. The nice thing about the uh, uh, the uh, the guards is that they, uh, they they don't cost fuel, right? It's mm -hmm. uh, something that you can immediately get once you get into uh, into the uh, command post. Yeah, and and they do when they get in close quarters. If you set up a favorable engagement, they do a lot of damage to infantry as well. 
So there's a lot of value there. Like but you, 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 you generally think of them as uh, as AT uh, units that uh, that can just somehow sometimes slap. Yeah. So here we go. Recon artillery forces Ferrity to displace, and I like the timing of this. Scatter those AT guns so you can move up and push a little bit. Yeah, AT guns move up, but now this P Grand squad forced to retreat through the recon already. It'll probably be okay. Here come the half tracks on the flank. And Stuart they knocks out baby. one. P3's on the flank, though. And it looks like they're going to... One of the Stuart gets claimed by a pack 38. The second about to go down here to the P3's. It pops the smoke. They elect not to chase. A pack 38 goes down. Now the six pounder refaces. Oh, one P3 dangerously close to going down. Gets knocked out. Oh, man. The ISG gets knocked out as well. Six, six pounders doing work. And the second P3 forced to back out. That's actually a really awesome engagement for Meteor Hammer. Fantastic use of the recon artillery to just basically put a big bubble in the center of Farage's units where he uh, doesn't he can't back up to. And it forces him to either advance into an unfavorable engagement or retreat through, you know, a high threat area. He basically chose the unfavorable engagement. Yeah. But to Farage's credit, he's still gonna... He's capping up a second VP right now, so despite that, he's maintaining the VP pressure. Let's see if that last Stewart can make it out of there. It looks like it's gonna be okay. For now. Infantry section pursuing these Panzer Pioneers, they're gonna force them off. Sapper's counter capping on the east side of the map. Now Farage you going for armored reserves. Victory point lost. And with this med truck, he's starting to recrew all of his lost uh, team weapons. We so a little bit of a manpower penalty, but uh, really the only changed army composition loss of that P3. Panzer Grenadiers in the center. And really good mortar micro. From Meteor Hammer continuing to force these infantry to uh, kind of reset and move on a regular basis. Interesting, Farage went for the dive bomb and not the anti tank loiter. Oh, they're going to try to run down this sapper squad on retreat. But man, they're just not taking any damage. Actually, they claim some veteran seeds, still don't drop a model. Now, Meteor Hammer coming in with a big push on the opposite side of the map. Two AT guns to get after the Stuart, but a lot of infantry behind it. And the Stuart actually goes for the med truck, follows up with recon artillery. That was a great combo right oh there. Oh my gosh, yeah. One, eight, one pack cleared. I guess they snare him while he's back there. They oh, miss it, they miss away. the snare. Now here wow. comes the dive bomb. Will he get away in time? Oh, it does a lot oh. of damage, but doesn't clear anything. He lost one squad, I think. Yeah, the steward finally oh, does go down. Recon already targeting the That's Panzer Pioneers. Oh. Uh, one AT gun gets cleared. These Dak Panzer Grenadiers doing a ton of damage, and the other AT gun goes down. Now that the foot guards. Go for it, Alan. That might have been too deep of a push there. I think he got a little ahead of himself. Well, it's wild because it really looked like he had Farage on the ropes. And I really don't know how it went sideways for him. Um, it's, the dive, it's the dive bomb. Yeah. It, it did, I, you're right, because it didn't kill one, anything, but it forced a displacement. And in doing that, it forced the six pounders out of position. The P3 was able to survive. And then the DAC infantry were able to do enough damage. It cleared those AT guns. Um, and with this med truck, he's going to get most of these weapons back. Although both sides kind of licking their wounds a little bit. Meteor Hammer's got the, uh, about to have the triple cap on here. He's trying to recover his AT guns, I think. Yeah. 
He goes and grabs a pack 38, interestingly enough. Nice use of the smoke to cover it. Oh, he thought about grabbing that LAIG. Yeah. And they're going to grab the other pack 38. Meanwhile, Farage's got. Is that a pack 38 or a six pounder? Yeah, so they basically swapped the T guns. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Here's another push right up the gut. Oh, uh, another... Here's another dive bomb. Oh, no. Oh, no, on retreat! Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, my goodness. That, that was a mic drop. Holy crap. Hey everyone, so we're going to start with the build order here like we normally do. I've changed up the format a little bit, so let me know what you think uh, in the comment section down below. So first off, for Farage, playing as the DAC, Armored Support Battle Group, starts with his Panzer Pioneers. He selects his Battle Group, he gets a Krod Schutzen out, and then three Panzer Grenadiers for a total of three throughout the game. There he techs up to the Light Support Company and then the Fire Support Elements and gets his Flak for Link out. From there, he immediately calls in LEIG, uh, he builds a Pac-38, he texts veteran squad leaders, then he gets a med truck out, and he texts his vehicle survival package, and then he builds his tier 4, where he calls in two Panzer 3s, he gets an additional Pack 38 call-in, and he texts armored reserves, but at that point, doesn't end up needing to use it. Alright, so for Farage, his battle group breakdown, obviously armored support, he immediately goes for veteran gunners for the increased penetration, then salvage kits, then the Panzer Storm ability, and then obviously his last choice is the Stuka dive bomb. And then for Meteor Hammer, playing as a UK heavy armor battle group, he starts with the Sapper, immediately builds a section command post, starts with two infantry sections, then he selects his battle group, gets a three inch mortar out, gets a third infantry section, Texas med station, uh, builds his platoon command post, gets an AT gun out, text for Stewarts, builds two Stewarts, uh, as well as a fourth infantry section and a second Sapper. He gets a second AT gun out, and then he gets into his company command post where he builds foot guards and then a Matilda before the end of the game. And then reviewing Meteor Hammer's battle group choices. So he goes for the engineer detachments, which reduces the deployment and reinforced costs of sappers. Then he goes for withdraw and refit, the forward repair assembly, and then finally unlocks the recon artillery. All right, so we're back. Uh, I have recovered emotionally from the end of that game. Um, so as always, we'll, uh, we'll kind of start it off and. And normally, I would say um, we'll start with Meteor Hammer. This game's a little different. Uh, so actually, one of the things we were talking about off camera uh, were the healing mechanics for the DAC and kind of the differences for them. So uh, I'll kick it over to uh, Ojima to kind of walk through that because there were some mechanics that even me and Fox were not fully tracking. So you want to do a rundown for us? So uh, DAC doesn't have, uh, doesn't have a medical tent. Mm -hmm. Right. Like the other units, uh, the other factions, which uh, you can immediately uh, research whenever you want and feel that uh, that is necessary to get your healing. Mm -hmm. DAC only gets uh, their healing from uh, from the ambulance. Like uh, and the other form of healing that they have is on their their half track, which is uh, they have like the dingo half healing where they can uh, they have a time ability where they can heal for 45 seconds when stuff is out of combat. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can garrison a unit inside the uh, the half track to heal for for a very slow rate, three point two, mm -hmm. which you know it's very difficult to heal your entire army like that. And also, of course, you know they can't uh, reinforce from from that half track. Yeah, uh, I think most healing is like what six HP per second. No, it's uh, it's like three point six, I believe. Okay, it's just that you're you're healing like all your guys at once, so it's it's not too bad. Yeah, right. Uh, so you have like six six units in a squad, so they they all healed three point like three point two. Yeah. So I know six. with the the Onyx Shark update, right? So like uh, previously, if you upgraded your half track at all, then you lost the ability to heal with it. So I think that's still the case with the mortar half track, but with the the two fifty slash nine variant, the auto cannon, that still offers you the ability to not only garrison a squad, but then also to heal. Yeah, that's why you see a lot of like DAC player in the team games being pretty happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so one of the thing that I think is interesting, right, the casualty clearing aspect of it, right? So uh, the U.S. and the Brits, their healing is an actual like 
uh, medical station tent that sends out medics to recover casualties from the battlefield. No, so so Brits don't have the medics. They don't have the medics. Brits don't have the medic. Uh, Brits, yeah, uh, Brits and uh, and so the uh, the Brits don't have the medic. They just have the tent. It costs the same, but they don't have the uh, they don't have the extra medics. See, and this... the extra med, yeah, the extra mags give. Uh, that's the reason why like uh, people always complain about USF players mm -hmm. because uh, they have such a huge uh, manpower advantage uh, simply from having the medics, right? Okay, so the so basically. The USF medic tent is a combination of the Coastal Reserve bunkers that provide free units and the med tent from the, the Brits. The bunkers are also not Coastal Reserve uh, exclusive either. Yeah, uh, you can actually build that. Uh, you can actually build a medical bunker uh, without Coastal Reserve. You can't build a command uh, and the AT bunkers uh, without the uh, the specific battle groups. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is uh, a little bit more expensive than the uh, than the base healing, and sometimes. Uh, for tempo people just uh people just build the uh people just take the uh the base the, healing the base yeah yeah it's you know it's it's fuel free but it costs you the munitions but then you get the casualty clearing you get the medics that go out and the free reinforcements i didn't realize that that wasn't a thing for the brits it's obviously not a thing for the dac but the advantage of investing in that med truck and we saw it over and over again uh in today's game uh, where a bunch of team weapons that get decrewed, but the med truck just rolls out there, right? You have the you know the fifty man power immediate recrew, but then also if you get the med truck right there, you just use your infantry units to hop on recrew your AT guns, your ISG, and they immediately reinforce and get topped up anyway. So advantage of having a med truck out, um, it's a you know a little bit more expensive, I think. What is it? Uh, you know, you can do it with the 15 CWT for the Brits. You can do it with the half track for the Wehrmacht, and you can do it with a half track for the the US. Um, and in all those cases, it costs munitions on top of the standard manpower fuel of the vehicle. Uh, so, yeah, it, I actually I really like this, right? Kind of the idiosyncrasies of the different factions. And I know we just spent you know five minutes talking about healing, uh, but I think it, it's worth considering and it and knowing the ins and outs of it is really like really valuable because you know uh not only for yourself what's more effective but for your opponent kind of what you can expect them to employ so i, I appreciate you kind of running through a breakdown um uh, as we yeah. uh and there, there, are, there are a couple there are a couple more things with healing uh you know yeah. the, uh, the pgrens healing is, is also really really strong as well right you can you can heal up uh, whenever you win a combat. You can you can heal up your your pgrens and uh, the dingle healing is also really strong because you have the healing before you have the med tent. And uh, you know mm. me and Gray Fox was talking. And Gray Fox said sometimes he doesn't even like to build like the med tent until like seven minutes into the game. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the reason why like the the, the healing on, on the the dingle is like really clutch. Yeah. Well, and and healing now with the TTK update. Is so much more important. Um, yeah. you know, it's another part of the discussion we were having. Like it, it before the you know Onyx Shark patch, you could send out infantry squads that were you know at two thirds health, and it was probably it would probably be okay. Um, but now, if stuff gets whittled down too much, even if you replace some of the models, you really run the risk of bleeding a lot of manpower. Uh, and so, like you pointed out, at one point, Farage basically retreated all of his units because he finally had healing available. Um, I think it was on cooldown from the half track, and he yeah. recognized it is more important for ha for him to have his squads like fully healed up, especially dealing with all the infantry sections. Which um, towards the end of the game didn't look like they were scaling very well against the pgrens, but I think in general with the updates, like they do a lot of damage, and so early game uh, you don't want to let them burn you down. All right, so uh, looking at Meteor Hammer, who I think. Uh, we can all agree played a really really great game um and had r really it felt like he had fairgy on the ropes a couple of times there uh really nice pushes combined pushes with the recon artillery in the back um to kind of force fairgy to play around it clearing some team weapons uh and then trying to get some favorable engagements and really trying to like use the at guns to knock out the p3s um and it didn't work because fairgy's masterful use of the dive bomb but so I would say, like, apart from the general rule of don't let your opponent delete your entire army with a single dive bomb, you know, uh, and Fox, I'll kick this over to you. What what's one thing that you think Meteor Hammer might have done differently 
to kind of turn this game around. So I, you know, it's always nice to see someone make a big push and really hurt their enemy and you know delete some squads and things like that. Um, and it's obviously quite satisfying to successfully pull that off. But I felt like you know he was a little behind in the early game, but he was he was keeping up with it, and I felt like he was playing a long game where he was going to be a little weaker at the beginning and then stronger later on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would expected him to just slowly ratchet his way across the middle and control that VP, you know, and spread the map out more. Um, but instead he, he went for the big push and tried to like throw the knockout punch at Fergie. And I think that that ultimately was his undoing. I mean, aside from because it baited him into a, um, uh, a dive bomb, but you know, I, he kind of came out ahead on those big push engagements, but he also lost a lot and was forced to mass retreat out of them. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like if you're a little, a little slower and more methodical and play the combined arms game, right. And set up your engagement areas, you can just kind of muscle your way into a position where you're just pushing them back out of position. Yeah. That's a really good point, right? He definitely was continuing to kind of shove up the middle and go for the knockout punch. And uh, one thing that I, you know, I've learned quite a bit with Aries coaching me is sometimes two out of three VPs is enough. You know, um, you well, don't need. That's, you, that was the thing was that he actually had three VPs. I think uh, he literally he did. could have just. He literally, right. um, I think that he had the advantage uh, at that point in time when the dive bomb started coming down mm-hmm. because he could he could build Matildas and uh, and for a while, uh, you know, Fergie would just have to like. Uh, sit back and you know how he's going to deal with him with a bunch of matildas right yeah absolutely i mean he really was in a position to force farage to make the big push right i mean he kind of had him backed into a corner and could have forced him to become desperate uh, and then he probably could have deleted him when farage ever committed but i th- i think he saw opportunity and thought hey you know what i can just end this game right now yeah uh, and it didn't pan out but then, uh, then uh, you know, the sky fell down on him, and uh, like, a, <laughs> like you know, like a sort of a, a kind of a meteor hammer. Of Man. <laughs> oh, oh, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, no, the I, I mean, I love to see the aggressive play, uh, and Farage's like uh, we we're or you were pointing out earlier, um, his talent is really setting up engagements that are are he's going to win. Right, he kind of starts on the defense. He sets things up the right way, and then once he gains an advantage, he exploits it. Um, but I, you know, something you were saying there uh, about a minute ago, Ajima. What I really like is uh, the idea of getting a couple of Matildas out. And you saw Fergie getting ready for it with the uh, the armored reserves. Right, he knew he needed some heavier armor. Get a P four, maybe get a Tiger. Um, yeah, the P threes are great against Stewarts. Uh, but once you start seeing Matildas or Grants, they just don't scale the same way. Uh, and so I think, you know, probably those Stewarts were on the field just a little too long. Um, so it's, the the P3s are kind of interesting, right? It's yeah. like, uh, why does Dak get P3s and uh, and Warmark get uh, P4s? You guys know the answer to that? I assumed it was a historical uh it, partially yeah. historical but it, but in the in-game balance right p3s are just uh they're they're basically uh they're basically p4s with less armor mm-hmm. like they're functionally uh they're functionally very simple sim- uh very similar and they cost about the same too it's like so the 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 final tier of that of uh of dac is you get p3s mm-hmm. and it has largely to do with the fact that uh dac gets universal upgrades and actually, you you can get a P4 with with DAC right through the call-ins, mm-hmm. but you can't spam your P4s. And uh, the P4s uh, in DAC, uh, the one of the things, the main reason why a lot of people like to play DAC is uh, in Magic: The Gathering they have this this idea of archetypes, and okay. new players are uh, new players like the really really big stuff, <laughs> right? And DAC, uh, you can be, you don't just get a tiger, you get a tiger that can cap territory, that can heal itself. That can see further, that could uh, move faster, that could turn his turret uh, uh, further, mm-hmm. and uh, and have like uh, 120, uh, 120 more health than the uh, the Warmark uh, uh, the Warmark uh, Tiger, mm-hmm. right? And you and your P fours are like that too. Your P fours, if you when you get your P fours, they get actually almost uh, they get almost one hundred and fifty five uh, piercing uh, 
uh, piercing damage instead of a uh, one one twenty five. You said with the with the tungsten ammunition. With the tungsten, yeah. And yeah. Uh, with the uh, with the uh, the battle group that uh, Fergie grabbed, he actually he could actually get get it up to like uh, like almost one hundred and eighty uh, uh, yeah. penetration. Yeah. And that's that's the same on on the P threes. So the P threes are actually not bad if you can get like two three P threes. Uh, you get on the side of the Matilda, you can start uh, you can start uh, shooting down the Matildas. Yeah. But uh, that's the that's the main reason. That's probably the main balancing reason why uh, why Dak doesn't get the P fours, uh, and they, they, they just get the inferior P threes is because uh, is because uh, you you basically get super P fours if uh, <laughs> you give uh, give them uh, you give them that. Yeah, that's a good point, especially with the uh, their ability to capture uh, VPs, you know, and and strategic yeah. points, which is. Ooh, pretty tilting. Whenever you know <laughs> you're starting to get you're starting to get back capped, and you go to send you know a an engineer or a scout squad over to deal with it, and there's a freaking tank sitting on it. Um, oh, and you, sounds and like you a give skill that, issue. You give them the, <laughs> always. If we're talking about me, a hundred percent. And then you know you got to deal with the uh, the auto healing they get when they're out of combat too. So I mean they're just they're fresh to the fight, you know, all the time. Yeah. And they're they're really really fast, you know. That's that's that, that's the thing is that they they move. Uh, they get twenty percent move speed. Yeah. It, and uh, the the tricky part is though with the DAC is right to get all those upgrades. You have to have manpower to float, right? Because that stuff starts to add up quick, right? If you if you get all the upgrades you were just talking about, that is eleven hundred uh, manpower roughly. Yeah. So that I mean that is four Panzer Grenadier squads. Or you know whatever combination of infantry that you would want, um, which I think is why you see a lot of DAC one v one play lean into uh, the mechanized approach, right? Eight rods, martyrs, stuff that doesn't bleed, right? As long as you can repair it, it doesn't actually bleed manpower and allows you to get those upgrades. So I thought yeah. it was I thought it was interesting that Farage played so infantry heavy. Um, I think he played a par- fairly meta, what I would call like a tier two build, right? With uh, three P Grens, uh, Flak for Lang, ISG, AT guns. Um, and I think it was appropriate given that he was playing against a British opponent. Uh, because yeah, and I, I was watching, I was watching some video from uh, Stefan JF, and uh, he was, uh, he, you know, he was doing the uh, the espionage, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the espionage battle group, and uh, he was selling his fuel, right. <laughs> Selling his and, fuel uh, to it, get manpower for the upgrades. Yeah, instead of, instead of selling the mu- munition points, which what do you think, right? It's the less important uh, thing. He was selling his fuel because uh, he said that at no point in the, uh, when you're playing DAC, right, uh, do you feel that uh, that like uh, feels like a bottleneck, which is ironic. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's always the, <laughs> it's always the manpower. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So they tried. I, I really appreciate the way Relic tried to like capture the historical stuff here. And then there's just a couple like swing and misses. Like the DAC not being fuel starved is funny. Uh the Grant somehow being better than the Sherman uh is another one, but that's yeah, neither the, the, the Sherman was what replaced the, the Grant. The Grant, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's neither here nor there. Uh getting back to the sorry to the review here for those who are still watching this. Um no, I honestly like me, I thought Meteor Hammer had Farage on the back foot, uh, and then Farage recovered brilliantly with the dive bomb. For Farage, I have no notes. <laughs> <laughs> do that. Do that. Do that every <laughs> time. No, I, I'm just gonna say this. To, so you know, I, uh, before I sent the the game in for uh, for you guys to review, right? I uh, mm-hmm. I changed the name of the uh, of the file because it's uh, Stuka for the win. <laughs> right and uh, yeah. of course uh, Farage submitted it and uh, of course I want to screen it to see you know it's like because anything on the uh, the code uh, DB is is either like you know just a glory uh, what do you call that uh, um, like <laughs> kind of ego uh, ego uploads right yeah and people Where, usually don't post when they lose yeah yeah um, or you know sometimes you get you get really really good games and uh, you know, I didn't want it to have the origin of the person uh, uploading the, the video, and uh, also I screened it to see that you know it's not like kind of like a you know just just stroking your uh, someone stroking their ego. Well, I I appreciate you finding this one for us. This is a a lot of fun to watch, um, and I literally just posted 
asking for some some Dak and Britt uh, replay. So uh, the timing was perfect. But you guys did not see the uh, the ending coming, right? Because I we did not see the ending coming. (laughs) I wasn't gonna go there. (laughs) Sorry. Oh. (laughs) Oh yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't see that coming. But the um, I have had someone do that to me and murder my ranger blob before, and it made me yeah, very, I've, I've very sad. Seen a lot, I've actually seen a lot of uh, Stuka dive bombs in, in uh, multiplayer recently. Yeah, it's, uh, sometimes weird. It's like uh, there's some. Uh, I don't think anything really changes about the Stuka dive bomb. It's just that uh, at a certain point, uh, suddenly every single player like discover like uh, like the joys of. Uh, of like just like you know splatting the an entire group of, of people well the aoe on it is huge huge yeah, yeah. i you I know and it's uh, he, so he had to time that out spectacularly so i mean hats off to him for sure but i, I what i find annoying is i felt like um the usf you know you used to be able to really use those um those the, dive bombers, the air support yeah. center, and yeah. it's it, the punch is just so telegraphed that there's not a single unit on the battlefield that is not going to move out of there, and the AOE is too small. So, you know, I would like to see maybe some adjustments there, and, and you know, not uh, the same as the stupid dive bomb, but you know, so like, here, let's make that viable at least. Yeah. So here's the pro- here's the problem with the uh, with the uh, was it the uh, the uh, bombers? Yeah. The bombing run, yeah, not the, the bombing the, run, but the I was talking about the ASC, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that 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 one's like it's way too small. It's way yeah. too slow. I, yeah. you know, with how cheap it is, I think what the the ASC would benefit from is maybe less damage, but the responsiveness needs to be there, or it's pointless, right? It can't right. be instantaneous. Like you remember when they first buffed it, it was oh. like patch like one point one. And it was just oppressive because everything I just arrived. Deleted in- every team weapon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, you know, maybe instead of a P forty seven dive bomb, maybe it's maybe it's something closer like a cluster munition or fragmentation bomb, right? Where it it can damage actually kill a lot of infantry. But for like, what is it like fifty munitions to get two of those to come through when you upgrade them? And they, like when they're actual dive bombs, they just delete stuff. But now they're to balance it. They made it so slow that it's almost pointless. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I if, if uh, they were to change the the air support, I would like to see some sort of uh, utility. Mm-hmm. Uh, utility instead. I, I feel that oftentimes utilities are just just a lot more useful. You know, because that thing is either that thing is either going to be super o- overpowered or or it's going to be super useless. I, yeah. So my my idea is you replace one of the abilities with a P fifty one combat air patrol. And so you can throw it up there because the allies have no good anti-air. Oh, you mean like air superiority? Yeah. yeah. So so then if the uh, it basically deletes uh, or disables any Axis air abilities for the duration. There, there is one problem with that, and uh, it's, it's what's known as uh, the no fun uh, button. <laughs> yes. You have yeah. that in card games too, like uh, silence effects and stuff like that, or like uh, something that just kills kills like a legendary you know come, comes yeah. in, uh, enters the battlefield kills a legendary like those are like they're you know people really hate them you know if you think uh you think like the um the skill planes are are annoying you know like you're just saying telling people that no you're you you, you know you can't use your ability is well, it's super yeah unfun. imagine a team game where you're playing against four us and they all go air support center and they just cycle through <laughs> their superiority and so you can't use any of your air-based abilities for the entire game. Yeah, I, no, you're you're exactly right. So my idea is only half baked. Sorry, everyone. I'll I'll go back and workshop it. All right, uh, we're on twenty minutes of discussion here. So uh, Fox, you got anything? Oh, fun match, you know. I mean, I think uh, I, I want to see the rematch and see if uh, if uh, you know he can pull it off again. You know, can you can you hit that shot twice in a row? That's the question. Yeah, I think if he hits it three times, he's on fire, and then it automatically hits it from there on out. I, no, I, I thought it was a good game. Ojima, thank you for grabbing this one and, and sending it to us. Um, and thanks for coming on. I know uh, we've been having discussions in the, the comment section for a while, so really appreciate uh, your input and your insight. Fox, as always, it was a good time. Uh, thanks for your thoughts, too. Uh, and that that's going to do it for us here, and we'll see you all in the next one.